But as long as you have had the intention with love, then honestly, you literally can't control their reactions. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and ICF certified women's life coach, and I help women to harness the power of their period and connect to their feminine flow. In these episodes, we will be talking about all things periods, hormones, confidence, health, food, money, sex, business, feminine flow, your brain, energy, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new chicken nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are thinking but too afraid to say. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast. I'm so excited to be jumping back on today, and I'm excited about this um, podcast topic because, I mean, Mercury Retrograde is now over, and it's well and truly over by the time that you will listen to this, but when I'm today is the 21st of November when I'm recording it in um, 21st of November, 22nd in Australia. Anyway, and, um, you know, the past couple of weeks leading up to this day of recording, boundaries have been like a really hot topic for my clients, but also for myself. And um, obviously with Mercury Retrograde, people are crossing more boundaries and there's more of a need to draw those boundaries and to really reiterate your communication and like get really fucking clear on what you're asking for and what you're needing, what you're desiring. Because with Mercury Retrograde, there tends to be a little more miscommunication. So we're going to talk today about how to be confident in your boundaries. And this is fucking important because it is so easy to draw a boundary, but to not actually follow through. And this is going to also be important for um, Christmas and the holidays. Um, but I, I just an FYI, if you do the early bird witch womb wisdom thing, there's going to be a whole nother um, audio recording, an audio module. It's about an hour long about how to do, actually it's all in an hour, how to deal with triggers and boundaries, um, and, and that sort of stuff over the Christmas holidays. And that's like a whole nother level. But, um, today we're going to talk about boundaries, and how to be confident in your boundaries. So you can have boundaries in your personal life and your work life, and you need to have them in both. And personal boundaries, they're basically just like guidelines or rules or limitations that a person, so you or I, create to identify reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to behave towards you, okay? And then it's about also how you will respond when someone crosses those limits, when someone passes the limit, okay? So that's what a boundary is. Um, so about how to be confident in your boundaries, the really thing that, the thing that I see people do a lot is like, oh yeah, I have boundaries, but then when someone crosses them, they don't know how to actually like communicate it to them and how to actually like hold your boundaries and follow through on your boundaries and be confident in your boundaries. And that is like the most important part of having a fucking boundary. There is no point in having a boundary if you are then going to let people cross it and then just like bite the bullet and not say anything, right? No biting of your tongue. I just see it again, 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 again of people biting their tongue because they don't want to rock the fucking boat. Ladies and gentlemen, let's fucking rock the effing boat because people are not rocking the boat and that is causing fucking problems in relationships, in society, in work lives, all that stuff because it's just creating egotistical people that have so much anger towards them because they are not expressing their desires. So they literally just build this like shitload of resentment inside of them. Okay, sip of water. Okay, so... um. Confident in your boundaries. That's what I'm going on. So the first thing is when you are deciding on what your boundary is, as when you are explaining your boundary to somebody or when you are saying like, hey, just so you know, you've like crossed my boundary, people may get triggered. They're, they might be like, what a fucking bitch and like get really effing triggered. But firstly, there's a massive fucking difference between boundaries and bitchiness, right? They're not the same fucking thing. So that's number one. Two, it is not your responsibility to deal with how someone has responded with your your boundary, right? It's, it's, it's absolutely not your problem. And the reason why I'm saying this is that like you cannot control someone else's response to something. You can only control the way that you communicate to somebody. So as long as your intention behind your boundary is like love for generally yourself is what it's going to be and self-respect for yourself, then there's nothing else that you could do for the other person. And as long as you're communicating the boundary with like an undertone energy, that doesn't really make any sense, but like the energy of love underneath when you're communicating, there ain't anything that you can do if they are going to receive it as like Monica's being a bitch or like she's being so fucking rude. There's nothing that you can do about that because you can't control somebody else's mind. But as long as you have had the intention with love, then honestly, you literally can't control their reaction. So that like, I know it's hard to just be like, so don't focus, like, so don't dwell on their reaction. I, I understand that that's really hard because you never like intend to hurt somebody 
Um, but they might take it in like a really terrible way. But with everything, even if you're explaining a trigger to somebody or if you're explaining like how you need someone to communicate with you or in your relationship, you're explaining what you desire more from the other person. Like if they take it in like a hurtful way, I know that your intention wasn't to be hurtful. And that is up to their perception. You got to also remember that like people will always um, hear things to fit their paradigm in their in their mind. Or another way to phrase that is they will always um, digest things in their mind according to their stories. So if their story is like um, you know Monica is mean, if I draw a boundary, then they then they are only going to see it as like here we go another fucking example of Monica being a bitch. But if someone knows, like, if but then, if for example, that's like, let's say that's like the average Joe Boy that like hasn't really done the work and doesn't really understand like speaking your truth. But then someone that understands speaking your truth, if I draw a boundary, and they are someone that's, that understands this work, they would actually be like, "Thank you for sharing that with me. Like, I'm I apologize for crossing your boundary, and now I know not to do that again." And they won't take it as a personal attack. But people that don't quite understand this, and also that don't draw their own fucking boundaries, will take this as a personal attack. So you got to remember that. You know, you're always going to, people are going to mirror stuff within you. So let's say you draw a boundary to your friend Sally and Sally goes like, oh my God, I'm like, is a bitch back to you. That is because you are mirroring what she doesn't have. And she probably doesn't draw her own fucking boundaries. And that's why she doesn't understand them. But if someone's drawing their own boundaries, they are like appreciative of when you communicate your boundaries to them. Now, whilst it might trigger them, it can also help them to see what they need to work on. They can they, they might go home and be like, fuck, I was so triggered in that scenario. Or like that really pissed me off. And it will plant that seed of like, why did it piss me off? Which is helping them because that they can also grow. You don't need to tell them, I triggered you. You should work on this. Like don't fucking tell them that. But um. It will, over time, plant that seed for them. What it will also do is it will also give them permission to start to um, communicate their own boundaries, which is also really, really important. Okay? So as long as your attention behind boundaries love, then you can't control the other person's reaction. And, I mean, I even see this, like, for example, we'll use my mum as an example. Before my mum did, like, my programs and was working with me, yes, she's done two of my programs. She's done The Mastermind and Baba. And I love her for it. I love her without it, but I, like, triple love her now. Um, anyway, whatever. Um, no, one, no one fucking take that shit the wrong way. Anyway, whatever. Um, and it's very interesting. Like, now when I'm like, hey, mum, like, please, like you are crossing a boundary or like, it's really upsetting me when you keep saying this or when you're mentioning this or when you're not doing this. And, um, she doesn't get like defensive now. She's like, Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Thank you for telling me. And like, she just like fucking receives it. And like, and it's just basically she fucking receives it and her ego doesn't like backfire in like, in like, rah, 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 rah. she's like, okay, I can see how you can mean it like that. So it's really important that when you're drawing a boundary that you're also like sort of asking in a way. I find that really helpful. Like you're saying, let's say you're doing a work boundary and someone's like emailing you on the weekend and then they email you again like Monday morning and like, have you gotten my my email? And it's like, well, it's been the weekend. If you want to like respond to them, well, let's say that someone's texted you at late at night and then they text you again at 6am in the morning and it's like, whoa, like calm the fuck down. And people do this, like go back to the episode where I'm talking about, um, Instant gratification is not cool or whatever I titled it. I think it's like episode 63 or something like that. Um, and I talk about it in there, but because we have this like constant need for like instant, instant, instant stuff, um, when we don't have that like instantaneous reply, um, or instantaneous like satisfaction, our brains go like, Oh my God, what is happening? Because we're like so used to it these days. So it's really important that, um, when, when I'm drawing a boundary with someone, I say like, Firstly, I need you to please like maybe put yourself in my shoes or like I would love for you to put yourself in my shoes or I'm hoping that you can respect this. Like, can you respect this kind of thing? And um, and just asking them in like nice language of like, can you please respect that like I'm running a business or that I'm, you know, having a weekend and I would just love for you to honor that. Um, and like, you can also call people out. Like you can totally call people out if they're being like a needy fucker and not respecting your boundaries. Like, especially if, if, so if you've communicated your boundaries to somebody before, and this happens, like this happens with my clients and obviously with me as well, if you've communicated a boundary before and then, or like you communicate to them, like, um, what would be an example? You communicate to them, um, uh, um, oh, I'm going away for the weekend. Um, I won't be able to, I, I, I see your message, but I'll reply on Monday or I'm, I'll reply on Tuesday. And then they like, don't, um, they don't, they message you again being like, 
it's been five days since you replied and it's like, well, I fucking, like, you, you were aware of what was going on in my life. That's when you can kind of reiterate, like, hey, just so you know, I'm, I, I said to you on Friday, I am going away for the weekend. Um, I really need you to respect that. I've got an inbox full of other people as well. Um, so, you know, I apologize for not meeting your expectations, right? Actually, you don't even need to fucking apologize, but like uh, you, you in your mind don't need to apologize, but you can say to the other person, like, I'm, I apologize. It's like when you have to say to an egotistical person, like, I'm sorry when you're actually not. Um, so you can say like, I apologize for not meeting your expectations. Um, however, like you were on my list, I, I, I will have replied to you, but, um, X, Y, and Z. So you can definitely kind of call the person out in a nice way. Like, just so you know, I did mention it on Friday that I was going away for the weekend, or just so you know, I did ask this of you three weeks ago. Um, like, you know, in the future, I would really appreciate if you can just like honor that, um, and trust that I will get X, Y, and Z done, for example. Um, so that's some boundary talk. Okay. So the other thing is that when we're talking about like boundaries and getting triggered by people's boundaries, if you feel abandoned or if you felt abandoned when you were a kid, if you feel abandoned and not loved by people drawing boundaries towards you and challenging you, that's your inner wounds in your inner child wounds showing. So if someone draws a boundary towards you and your ego is like super attacked. So there's kind of like two ways this can happen. You're going to be like, Oh my God. And like get defensive and you'll feel like someone's attacking you in like a, like a, um, and your ego will get defensive. So it's like very head, very like, um, like, uh, trying to prove that you're not right. But then it's kind of hard to explain. And I just hope that you guys can like get this from like what I'm trying to explain. That's kind of like your ego's response, right? Like not healthy, but then let's say for example, like, you know, that there is those situations where, and this sound me with like a flatmate before, there are these situations where like you are actually right and the other person is actually wrong. And you're not saying, oh, I'm right, you're wrong from an egotistical way. You're saying this from like a soulful way of like, actually you are in the wrong. So like really a short example. Um, and like, I'm not going to give you the full story. Actually, maybe I should give you the full story. Maybe it's entertaining. I don't want to get, whatever. I, I'm not going to give you the full story because like, whatever. Um, but basically when I was in New York early this year, um, I was here for, on holiday with my friends and, um, and then, um, I came home and long story short, basically my flatmate thought I was coming home a day later. And so I was at the, I was at the airport and I just like texted him being like, Hey dude, I'm nearly home. Um, like are you home or something or other? And then he was like, Oh shit, I thought you were coming the next day. And I was like, okay, the place is going to be trash, like whatever. Um, and I, I didn't have that expectation of like a neat and tidy, um, apartment like that was clean. I'm not really too fussed about tidiness. It's more like cleanliness. And like there's fucking cockroaches everywhere in Sydney. And this is when I was living in Sydney and I just fucking hate bugs anyway. So, um, I didn't have that expectation. It was it was fucking foul. Um, I didn't have that expectation walking in because I like, because I really like, I'm very good at giving people space. So it's like, I walked in and like, for example, he'd like shaved his pews and left them all through the shower. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? It was fucking disgusting. So, um, but I like, I didn't attack him because I also like, I also trust it. And I'm really good at like trusting people. It's also like, okay, he thought I was coming home the next day. So like, I'm not going to have a go at him for not cleaning because I know that he would have cleaned had I come home a day later when he thought that I was coming home. So that's fine. So I was kind of like, I bit the bullet with that one. And that was, and I wasn't like a resentful bit the bullet. I was like a happy to bite the bullet kind of thing, different energy. Right. Anyway. So I was coming home and then he was like, by the way, like, um, so-and-so left, which is my other flatmate, left her radio in your room. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Why is my radio in her room? And she was like, oh, he was like, oh, she had some friends over and like they charged it in your room. And I was like, okay. And like, she was meant to, she was meant to like leave the apartment anyway. So I was like, why is she in the apartment? Like she left last weekend. Anyway, the apartment had a good view. So I was like, okay, whatever. And I was like, so fucking tired. So I just like went home and I kind of like forgot about it. I like brought it up with her and she was like, no, I didn't put that in your room. And so I was like, okay, whatever. And like, you know, when you just like forget about things, I forgot about it. And then a couple of weeks later, um, my mum was actually visiting me in Sydney and she was like, did you ever find out what happened about the radio? And I was like, no. And she was like, I've got a funny, she's like, Monica, you didn't ask so-and-so, which is the guy that I live with. Um, you really need to ask him about that because like, I have a funny feeling that like someone was like in your room and not just like quickly going in to grab something like in your room. And like, we have a very open relationship, me and this guy. Um, like we, we did, um, before our relationship like ended. So like I, I'm, I wasn't someone that like locked my room when I left. I like was very trustworthy and like, 
blah, blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, I then like brought up with him. I was like, Hey, by the way. And like, I'm super chill now in like, um, in these sort of situations, I've trained myself to be that. And I was like, Hey, by the way, um, I never like understood what happened with the radio that was in my room. And anyway, basically someone slept in my room, like one of his friends slept in my room, um, and like took the mattress to sleep on. Like I actually like, can't even remember the whole situation. Basically there was like a massive invasion of personal privacy and it was all lied about. And I was just like, what the fuck? And I'm one of those people where it's like, if you texted me, dude, you know, just being like, Hey, can so and so sleep in your bed? Can so and so use your mattress? I would have been like, yeah, of course, just watch the sheets. But like, because it was lied about and then like blamed on somebody else, it was like, it wasn't the sleeping in my room. That was the problem. It was like the massive, um, crossing of boundaries. That was the problem. So like, I actually was so shocked. I literally like didn't even get angry. I was like, wait, what? And I had to do like a double take in my mind. I was like that, you did not just say that kind of thing. He got really fucking angry. It was a very terrible situation to be in. Basically like my friend was like, you are not allowed to come back to Monica's apartment. Like you are kicked out kind of thing. Like do not sleep here tonight. Anyway, he, I did let him come back because he like kind of apologized, but I knew that he didn't fucking mean it, but whatever. Point being, so in that scenario, that was like a massive fucking boundary crossed. Now, where was I going with that? Hold on. I need to fucking, I've gone so left tangent. I need to go back and listen to where I was going with that story. Okay. I got it. So basically what I was explaining is like the difference between like, you are wrong. I am right. Versus like, I am actually right. And you're actually wrong in that scenario. So I actually like said to him, like we were like having an argument, but I'm saying really chill, which made him more pissed because I wasn't like yelling back at him when he was yelling at me. Um, and I said, and I said like, dude, you are actually wrong. Like you are in the wrong, you are incorrect. Like what you did was wrong. I am right. And that was not from like an egotistical way. That was like my soul. So that was like, when you are saying that it feels like in your body, like there's no part of you that's like, Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong. There's no second guessing of yourself. You're like, actually like, like, let me just full on think about this for a second. And in a calm way, and you're like, yep, yeah, you are incorrect. Like, and that's not even like a perception kind of thing. That is like a human decency. You are wrong. So that in the, in situations like that, where it is like, you know, a human rule basically, um, and not a perception thing. It's a human fucking rule of like, you don't do that. Um, is that was in that, in that scenario, like, that's like, yes, you can say I am right. You are wrong. But majority of the time when you're in an argument with someone or when you're, when there's a miscommunication, if you're just going, no, you're fucking wrong. Or your brain, your head is like, you're wrong. I'm right. When your head, like the energy is coming from your head, that's your ego. But when your energy is in like your soul and you're like, and you're really grounded and you're like, actually I'm right. And it's like a really grounded kind of, I'm right. You're wrong. That's from like a soulful, a soulful space is what I was explaining to you guys. Um, okay. So when you like are explaining a boundary to somebody, um, I still don't know where I was going with this. Hold on. I got to go back again. Fuck. Okay. So I was explaining how there's like two ways that you can kind of be triggered if someone's wrong a boundary with you. So in that scenario, I wasn't triggered because it wasn't a childhood wound. It was like a soulful kind of response. It wasn't from my ego. He was triggered though. And like, it was very fucking obvious, obviously he was triggered because obviously there was a childhood wound there. And I'm assuming it was something, you know, like not feeling good enough for his parents or, um, being ridiculed by X, Y, and Z. So there was a childhood wound there for him. That's why it was so fucking triggering for him where he went like ballistic because his inner child felt like out of control and felt abandoned and not loved. And like, obviously when you have a close relationship with somebody, like when someone draws a boundary with you, that's really close to you, you can feel super super attacked when it doesn't, they're not meaning to attack you, right? Then there's no meaning of attack of being attacked. Um, there's no intention, sorry, of attacking another person, but you could take it as an, as an attack. If it is opening up a childhood wound that you haven't like completely healed and like remove the scar tissue of, um, Okay. The next thing with boundaries is that when you're drawing a boundary with someone, people do like twist your words and make a different meaning to them sometimes. Not always, of course, but people totally can. So this is why it's so important that on a soul level, you fully believe in your boundaries, because if you don't fully fucking believe in your boundaries on like a soulful level, then if someone twists your words, you might be like, oh shit, like they're right. Or like you might then get defensive. 
But if you can identify, okay, they are twisting my words. That is not what I said. It helps you to stand confident and to stand strong in your boundaries. Okay. So like I said before about like people will like twist the meanings to like suit their paradigm. They will or suit their like thought processes or their stories. Paradigm is just like a story. Um, they will also, they can, they can also twist your, not will, they can also twist your words, um, to suit what they are trying to get out of the situation. This will especially happen if they are in like a very like emotional state in their life or something like that. If like something major has happened, they're like an, an emotional wreck, then they are more, that because they've got like more emotion in there, they're definitely not necessarily going to take a step back and like really think about what you've said and see your opinion. They're going to be like, no, she ain't fucking listening. My inner child isn't getting what I want out of this. And what your inner child is wanting out of that is like the, you're right, I'm wrong. Um, but that's not necessarily the case because you all need to draw a boundary because that's also a sign of self-respect for you. Boundaries are, um, can, can be complicated to explain. So I just want you guys to like receive this, however it's suiting you. So whatever is coming up for you is perfect. Um, if you don't fully understand what I'm saying, just go back and re-listen, go back and re-listen because however the thing, whatever's coming through for you right now as you're listening to this is what you need to know. Okay. The next thing is that if you, um, if when you're having boundaries and when you're sharing your boundaries with somebody, the, the biggest thing about having boundaries and why it's important is it's an act of self-respect. It's an act of self-love. Okay. And you can't, you can't expect other people to respect you and love you. If you also don't love yourself and respect yourself. Okay. So as you draw boundaries, the, the benefit of drawing boundaries and like actually drawing them and then holding people to them is that they're then like in your aura, your energetic field. So what it will mean is that like future people that come into your life, it's kind of like an unwritten boundary that people are just like aware of, which is really, really good. So this is why it's really important that you draw boundaries with, boundaries with your clients or if a client crosses your boundary, it is your obligation as a coach, if you're a coach or if you're like a lawyer or a consultant or anybody if, or a manager, if, if one of your clients or employees crosses a boundary, if you don't explain it to them, they're never going to fucking know. So you need to explain it to them, not just so that they know, but also so it's like in your field and your aura and it will prevent it happening repetitively. Like, of course, maybe it'll happen again in the future, but again, draw the boundary again. And it's going to like diminish the amount that it happens, which is really important. And if you have, if you have clients that like are constantly twisting your words, that to me is a red flag because they aren't open to actually like being like, well, I'm hiring Monica or Sally or you, I'm hiring you because you're the expert. Like they've hired you because they trust you and because you are the expert. So if they are also then going to twist all of your words, they're not open to receiving new information. They're not open to changing their thought patterns. So if you've got clients that are like constantly like twisting your words, to me, that's a big red flag that you, um, that they are probably way more work than what it's worth. Um, and like energetic work for you, it's fucking draining. It's fucking draining because it's like, you're talking to a brick wall, except they talk back at you. Like the brick wall talks back at you, but in like a unhelpful way. Anyway. Um, okay. What, what else is I going to say? Uh, okay. Let's go through some examples of like how you can draw, um, a boundary. So an example, so the first thing I want to say is like, never say, but always say, and just like a side note, when you say, but you like, um, cross out for want of a better word, the, um, the beginning of a sentence, let's say like you say, I love you, but well then you don't fucking love them. Like you've crossed out the, I love you. Um, so you always want to be saying, I love you. And, or like whatever you're saying. So for example, a way to draw a boundary. Like it's okay for you to tell me how you're feeling and it's not okay for you to yell at me. So it, so like if you said it's okay for you to tell me how you're feeling, but it's not okay for you to yell at me, then it's like, well, then it, then you basically said it's actually not okay for you to tell me how you're feeling. That's what, especially if you're saying this to a man, that's what they'll hear, especially. So you want to be saying it's okay for you to tell me how you're feeling and it's also not okay for you to yell at me because then what you're saying is like, I want to hear how you're feeling. And I don't want you to yell at me when you're doing it. Like, please explain it to me. 
Um, another way to draw a boundary, for example, would be I would really appreciate it if you would be able to give me the heads up that you're not able to come a bit earlier. So for example, like let's say a client is like running really late and they tell you like five minutes happened to be someone, so some, uh, some, uh, one of the other, like, Oh my God. Whoa. This happened to me like a week ago, not with a client. It was, I was going to a meeting and, um, and they told me like 10 minutes after our meeting time, like, can we push it back half an hour? And I was like, that's not how it works. And I was like, uh, no, I'm already here. Um, so if you have that happen to you with a friendship or a client, what you could say is like, um, like, well, maybe no, actually I can't. And that could really trigger them. But like, you're not trying to be a bitch. You're just actually saying, no, I literally can't do half an hour later. Like that's as simple as what it is. And again, people might twist your words, if they are being triggered by it or if that wound is coming up for them. Um, so what you could say instead is um, like, no, I can't. And I would really appreciate it if you just be able to give me the heads up that you're not able to come a little bit earlier next time. So I know, right. And that's just, again, drawing a boundary of like, I need you to tell me earlier than this because like, otherwise I'm running late or like, otherwise you're pushing me back for the rest of my appointments and you don't have to blame them or shame them. Like this is not about shaming somebody for being late or shaming someone for not being a good enough boyfriend or whatever. This is absolutely not what this is about. What this is about is like literally actually communicating what you want, speaking your truth. Because when you don't speak your truth and you bite the bullet, you bite your tongue, you bottle it up, it actually creates fucking resentment in your body. It creates resentment towards the other person, which is so not fair on them. And over time, it will create an energetic block. So let's say, for example, I um, said to that guy, like, okay, yeah, we can do half an hour later. Like, let me know when you're here. And I just like waited around and fit, fucking dawdled my thumbs. Well, I had somewhere else to be. So what did I have after that? I actually had a, another meeting to go. I had to go check out my office space at, at, at 12 o'clock. And this was like 1130. And he was like, can we meet half an hour later? And I was already there and it was like 1135. And I was like, well, no. So let's say, for example, that I said, okay, sure. And I just like was submissive in a toxic way, right? I, I let him cross my boundaries and like absorbed the resentment. What would then have the, the flow on effect from that would have been that I was late for my office appointment. That would have then put resentment on the the next person. Like when she was showing me around my office, she would have then be like, "Where the fuck is Monica?" And that would have put a, 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 a that would have like put a twist, a negative twist on our relationship dynamic. That's not ideal, right? Then it would have thrown the whole fucking rest of the day out of. Um, out of whack because um, I kind of had a plan that I wanted to stick to. It was like, okay, I had to be here by this time, here by this time. I was going to go for like a sauna at two. I had to go do some errands and it was all like planned out, not in a masculine way, but in a way that I then kind of my mind knew, okay, I'm going to get everything done. And like, it was just like a little bit of a plan of attack. Okay. Like a feminine plan of attack. So um, a feminine plan to flow, whatever. Fucking beside the point. Point being is that would have had a really big flow on effect. And by the end of the day, I probably wouldn't have gotten everything done or I would have at least been really pissed because then I would have had the girl at the office being like, hey, like maybe she would have drawn a boundary with me being like, hey, like, please tell me when you're going to be late or like, I don't appreciate you being late. And that would have then triggered me because I knew I was late and like people trigger you and you also like know that within you. So let's say, for example, someone says to you like, hey, I don't appreciate you being really nasty behind my back you would only be triggered if you were being nasty behind your back, behind the person's back, but you won't be triggered if you're like, what? I'm not being nasty behind your back. You would have been like, that's a weird comment to say, like, I'm not being nasty behind your back. And like, you would have kind of been like, okay, whatever. And you would not have been triggered. So I would have then been triggered by the girl at the office, probably because she would draw a boundary with me because that's also her fucking job and she doesn't owe me anything. And then, um, and then not the people who need to owe you anything to draw a boundary. And then I would have been like kind of pissed after that and like feeling a bit rattled in my body. And then I would not have been able to shake that feeling the rest of the day um, unless I like took myself home and like took myself through a process, which like I find hard to take. I, I find it very hard to take yourself through processes. It's better when I have someone else take me through a process. That's why I like I have a coaching session every week anyway. And so um, that would have like fucking thrown my whole day. And then it would have meant that every time I come into the office, if I didn't clear that resentment with the person because I knew I was wrong, I would have like, it would have just created a little bit of like, uh, every time I walked in and like saw her. Right. So all around, it would have just been like a fucking, fucking shit show if I did not draw my boundary. So like also think about the flow on effects, ladies, of not drawing your boundary. Okay. Holy shit. My cacao was coming through me. I need to go to the bathroom. BRB. Okay. I'm back. 
Love a good um, PCP, post-cacao post cacao poo. I love when I'm on the phone to my clients and they're like, holy shit, when I have to go to the bathroom, I'm like, cacao, yep, go. It just like fucking clears you out. Well, at least mine does. Actually, it's funny, when I make them for my friends, one time Britt was like on the toilet texting us because we were all having a holiday together in Byron. And she was like, sorry, I'm just going to be like 10 minutes late. Monica's fucking detoxing my bowels like no one's business with her fucking cacao. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Seriously, I, like, I can just poo like a fucking machine sometimes. Okay. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say was also uh, another example of how to draw a boundary is this. I know you had a commitment and it came up last minute, but just so that you know, because sometimes people don't know, uh, you've, you've canceled many times and I'm wondering if in the future, can you please respect my time as I respect yours? That, and that would mean a lot to me. Let me repeat that. So let's say this is an example of when your friend is like constantly canceling. Okay. Um, Hey, Becky, whatever. Um, I know you had a commitment and it came up last minute. And I just want to let you know that you have canceled many times. So I'm wondering if in the future, can you please respect my time? Because I respect yours. And that would really mean a lot to me. Boom. You'll probably fucking trigger her because she knows that she always cancels. But that ain't your fucking responsibility. Remember that. It's not your responsibility how somebody reacts to the way in which you draw your boundaries or what your boundaries actually are. Remember that as long as you say your boundaries with the intention of love and self-respect, not being a bitch, just self-respect and also maybe like pointing out to them what they are actually like doing kind of incorrectly. And like these are kind of like when I say incorrectly, I don't mean like based on your perception incorrectly. I mean like those kind of unwritten human rules, unwritten human rules. Let's say, um, you know, uh, giving people like space to reply to your phone call or email or X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, telling your friends when you're running late, uh, not canceling after the start of the appointment, for example. Um, what would be another, another one? Um, you know, not, not yelling at people or not, um, like abusing people, for example, like they are unwritten, they are boundaries or like, um, blackmail and uh, manipulation like those are the unwritten human rules of like hey please don't fucking do that if you're like let's say what would be a boundary of like my um what would be a boundary of like my rule or something that like wouldn't be necessarily everybody's rule so maybe like um Oh, okay. Let's say, for example, someone is like badgering me before, let's say, 10 a.m., right? Because some people start work at like 8 a.m. But like, I really take time in the morning. I do my morning routine. I like fuck around reading and like just like tarot cards and journaling. And like, I like just like to do random shit in the morning, right? Um, and like exercise and whatnot. So by the time I'm like, you know, really sitting down at my laptop and like getting into my work, it can be like 10 a.m. And sometimes I don't even get to my emails until like that evening. So if someone's like badgering me, for example, at like at like 9.30 and I'm not replying, that doesn't mean that that, that would not be like an unwritten human rule. Of like it's only 10 a.m. Because like some people are like, it's 10 a.m. Where the fuck? Like the world is awake. And like I wake up at 6 a.m. But like I get that. So you can't then say to the person like, hey, it's only 9.30. Give me a fucking break. Because like they might be like, well, I have been at work since 7 a.m. So for you, it would be like, hey, apologies. I don't really like start work until, oh, someone's phoning me. Hold on. I can't back. So you would then say like, hey, apologies. I don't sometimes get to my emails until 10.30, 11 a.m. or like 4 p.m. Like had a busy day. And that's not then dropping it. Like that's not being like drawing a boundary. That's just like apologizing because you know, your way of doing life is different to other people. And like, you're also respecting that. And you're kind of telling them just so they know for the future. Like, by the way, I don't really reply to my email sometimes for a while. That's why I have an automatic reply on my email saying like, it will take three to five working days to reply to you because sometimes it takes people like literally a week to get a reply from me. Shelby replies quickly, but if it's like a personal email to me, you know, like I can get really, like, I know, not I can, like I am have a like long list of to-dos, right? I fucking love my job and I love working. So I like to load up my plate, um, which means sometimes I don't reply to people's emails for quite a few days. And it's not my intention, but if they send a, if they send an email on like a Friday, I won't reply to them sometimes by, until like Tuesday because like Monday might've been crazy. So um, that's that. Anyway, and like another way to, for example, to draw a boundary is like with your, if you, let's say you got clients and like you're taking a Christmas break and you don't want them to email you. You're like, don't fucking email me, please. So what you would then say to them is like, hey, um, 
I know we're like obviously still in a container, whether it's a contract, whether it's like them, you're their lawyer or whatever, or their coach or their consultant or whatever it is, PR person, whatever you can, or policey, um, you can say to them like, um, Hey, I know we're obviously going to be like still working together and technically we're still in a contract over the Christmas and holiday period, but I just want to let you know, I'm taking a full break from here to here. I won't be replying to emails, texts, etc. So like you can send me something, but I'm not going to reply. So I just want to give you a heads up. And like, I've done that to every single client and like clients that I've signed now that we're working, like we've, we're like clients that I'm signing now. And then I'm having a break over December and January and then we we're finishing in February March x y and z they're super aware of that before I even say like okay do you want to do this on a discovery call I'm like just an FYI there is a no contact period between x and x and so basically I like pause their contract if that makes sense so let's say for example with my one-on-ones you get like Voxer access with me Voxer is like a voice messaging app and you get that for the three month one-on-one like container but December from the middle of December to the middle of January it is it, it, everything is paused. What that then means is like, let's say for example, they started first of November, they'll get November. They won't get, no, okay, hold on. Let's say they start middle of November. They'll get middle of November to middle of December. Then they'll get a whole month paused. Everything is paused, right? Then they'll start again for middle of Feb to, no, middle of January to middle of Feb and then middle of Feb to middle of March. And that's like their three month, but it's kind of over four months because I'm taking a month off. Does that make sense? And that's me just like really clearly communicating that to them. And also when you're wanting to really communicate something with somebody, you can say to them, does that make sense? Like, have you, has that landed? Have you got that? Like just clarifying. And you can put these little things, especially over the Christmas period, you can put these things in emails so that also if they come back to you and you're like, and they're like, you haven't replied to my email. You're like, um, see exhibit a, um, so yeah. Okay. And also ladies, like some of people just like, don't look at fucking emails. They don't, or they don't look at, they don't look at contracts. They don't look at like, you know, your boundaries if you've written them out for them. So I like to like bold highlight, make sure they've like, fucking sign that shit so that they don't come back to me being like, oh, you said we got like Voxer access. And I'm like, no, not over the Christmas period. I didn't say that. Um, so that your ass is also just like crystal clear so that they can be like, okay, actually, yeah, I didn't fucking hear that. Um, and that's also just part of you having that respect for your own energy of like, I don't want to have to explain this a million times, or I don't want to have to, um, you know, deal with, um, someone being like, oh, there was a miscommunication when you're like, no, there wasn't. Everything's written out here. That's why I like to have like everything written in those, in those sorts of scenarios. So anyway, I hope this has been like, um, a lot of talking from my end. I hope that, um, you guys understood everything in here and that you received this all well. Um, this is something that like, I feel like so many people and women especially, um, really need to fucking work on. So I would be really, I think your friends actually more so would be really grateful if you shared this on your Instagram or like with some friends or on your Facebook or whatever, so that they can maybe also do that, like to listen to it and, and have their boundaries. And don't forget the more, the more people like hear this, the more people will set their boundaries. And then it's also like the more you can set your boundaries. And then it will just be like, widely accepted to have boundaries and you're not being a bitch you're actually just like having self-respect which is what I say okay um ladies if you haven't signed up to witch room wisdom make sure you do that um I don't know when I'm gonna put this out so the witch room wisdom is either gonna be out by the time this is out or the wait list is out so just whatever link is in the description check it out get it it's the most fun fucking program it's just like it's basically just like fucking woo woo and fun to do over the holidays and it really gets you into that like witch archetype um and that is really like it is a really good archetype to get into to start connecting to your feminine energy um so I highly recommend that you join that because it's also fun and there's a whole epic Facebook group with all these other women that are like so into their witch vibes um which helps you to also feel safe in like being in your tarot and your oracle decks and whatnot because I know For a lot of you, like your family looks down upon it or your friends are like, what the fuck are you doing? And they don't really get it. Well, I've created a community where we all fucking get it. We all fucking get it. Um, And I kind of say, maybe they don't get it. Like maybe this is normal and what they're doing isn't normal. Who the fuck knows? All right, ladies, have an incredible, incredible day. Oh, and if you haven't done, if you you are interested in the certification and you haven't um, already put your application in, no, the application will be closed by this time. If you haven't already emailed me, um, you know, or like, signed your agreement or whatever the early bird offering is ending like I'm, I'm saying like I know in the like, technically it's the end of December December 31st 
But um, let's be real. Like, I'm not going to be posting around the Christmas time. So you want to get that shit in by, like, 15th of December. Um, otherwise, you might forget because I won't be, like, mentioning it a million times in in, on Instagram and via email and whatnot. So if you are wanting to do that, please make sure that you do that. Otherwise you have to wait till 2022. Um, if you miss out, it's going to be fucking lit. Everything that you need to know is in the syllabus and on the sales page. So just click the sales page link in the description and you can read everything It's all the FAQs, X, Y, and Z and read the syllabus. I've been getting questions where I'm like, dude, it's on the syllabus. So please read the fucking syllabus. I am so happy to answer any questions or clarify anything. Um, but please don't ask me like how much it costs because it's in the syllabus. So make sure that you read it because otherwise questions like that, it actually makes me concerned of like, are you reading things? Um, it's like, people don't read things these days. I don't know why. So please, like people don't read contracts. Like guys, read your fucking contracts. Like, please. Okay. If there's one thing that you've gotten out of this whole thing, read your contracts, read the shit that you are signing and that you are, you know, getting involved in. If you are paying big bucks, ask for everything to be written out so that you can clearly see it and you haven't missed anything because there are miscommunications. We do filter things out by example. And that's like, that's a mistake that you probably don't want to be making. So let's avoid those mistakes by actually reading things. Um, Okay, ladies, have an incredible day. And I hope you have a good holiday and everything. I just, yeah, I love you all so much. Um, If you haven't left a review, I'd be really grateful for that as well um, because that's like the best way for you guys to give me that energy exchange. I like fucking love it. There's over 130 reviews um, as of like when I'm recording this and it's just like blows my mind. That's like written reviews. Like fucking thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Have a good day. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you got lots of chicken nuggets out of today's episode. I would be really, really grateful if you'd be able to leave me a review and a star rating that you think is appropriate, hopefully five. And if you could share this podcast so that I can help more women live a life of flow and ease, I would be so fucking grateful. Make sure you tag me in it on Instagram so I can personally thank you because I know so many of my clients have found me literally because their friends have posted about my podcast on their Instagram story. And I just want to help as many women as possible. So by you sharing it, I would be so fucking grateful. And I'm sure your friends would be too. If you do want to welcome me, please do check out my website for all those details. And of course, you can DM me on Instagram with any other questions. If you have any podcast things you want me to talk about, any ideas, any feedback, I am always open to it. And I always love hearing what you guys have to say. So please don't hesitate about that either. I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.